Colton Melhoff here from Matrix Robotics with tips and tricks video number eight about gears. We'll talk about gear ratios, the types of gears Matrix has, and how to mount them onto your robot. Matrix has three sizes of gears. The smallest gear has 24 teeth, the medium size has 40 teeth, and the largest gear we have has 56 teeth. These have built-in hubs with set screws attached, and they have different radiuses of 1.5 holes, 2.5 holes, and 3.5 holes. We can use these radiuses when we're designing because if we are finding a spot where gears are going to go, we can add the two radius together to find the distance from the center of the hole to the center of the next hole between two gears. So the smallest gear and the largest gears have radiuses of 3.5 and 1.5. Add those together and you get five holes. But that's from the center to the center, so it's going to take up six total holes. So we count across here, we can see it has one, two, three, four, five, six holes. Now the cool thing about this is that the six total holes is what you need for a three, four, five triangle because the distance from the center to the center is five holes. Um, and that actually works from the smallest to the biggest, the biggest to the smallest, of course, or from the medium size to the medium size, that's also six holes because this has a radius of 2.5, so that times two would be five holes plus one more, uh, six total holes going across there, distance of five. So there's different ways you can line them up and using the radius to design your robot. We can also use gear ratios to our advantage. We can calculate the gear ratio by having the teeth on one gear to the teeth on the other gear. Now gear ratio is the ratio of how many times one gear is going to turn to the ratio of how many times or to the number of how many times the other gear is going to turn. So if we take this gear that has 24 teeth and this gear that has 56 teeth, we can reduce those numbers. So it'd actually be 56 to 24. We reduce it down and we get seven to three. So the small gear is gonna spin seven times for every time the big gear spins three times. Now the torque that you get out of it is gonna be the opposite. So the torque out of the small gear would be a factor of three and the big gear would be a factor of seven. So if you wanna find the torque, you can actually take whatever torque you're putting into the small gear. Uh, to find the big one, you take the torque you're putting into the small gear, divide it by three, and multiply it by seven, because the torque is a ratio of three to seven. The speed is a ratio of seven to three, so it's gonna be the opposite there. You can either make things drive fast or drive with a lot of torque. And we'll have some examples of that a little later. You can find this also with the smallest gear to the medium gear, for example, so that would be 24 teeth, 40 teeth, we reduce that down to get a uh, speed ratio of three to five, so, excuse me, five to three. So this gear will spin five times every time this gear spins three times. If we have the same gear, they have the same number of teeth, so it'll be a one to one ratio. Every time this gear spins one time, this gear will spin one time. And the same torque you put in this gear will be what you get out of the other gear. On this model, I have a wheel attached to three different sizes of gears. I have a 24 tooth, 40 tooth, and the 56 tooth. <clears throat> and then they are both they are all attached to another gear, the complementing one that has six holes total. So we have a 56 to 24, a 40 to 40, and a 24 to 56. When I spin all of these three gears at the same speed, the other ones are gonna spin at a very different speed. And we'll show you that by attaching this um, bearing to different gears. So first I'm going to attach it to the smallest gear and we'll see how much it moves. I'll take this big gear and move it about 90 degrees and we can see how far this bearing is going to go. So the biggest gear here is moved 90 degrees and you can see how that bearing is moving almost 270 degrees. Now if I take that off of the smallest gear and I can instead attach it to the biggest gear, now we have a ratio of the 24 to the 56, so that's the same thing as a uh, 7 to 3 ratio. I'll still turn this 90 degrees, and you can see how that bearing just barely moves. But now, the torque coming out on that bearing is a lot, much more than on the biggest gear to the smallest gear. I have another example here that takes us to the next level. So, we actually have two gear ratios here. We're going from the smallest gear to the biggest gear, and then again from the medium sized gear to the biggest gear. Well, Colton, we didn't come up with a gear ratio for that one. We can figure it out. 
So we have two different gear ratios, the smallest one to the biggest one, and the medium sized one to the biggest one. Now the 24 to the 56 has a seven to three ratio. And we'll write that down. And then we have the medium to the biggest one, the 40 to 56, a seven to five ratio. And we can find the total from the smallest gear to the end biggest gear by taking those two um, ratios and multiplying them together. We'll take the first two numbers and multiply them together and take the second two numbers and multiply them together and that will be our end ratio. So we come out with a ratio of 49 to 15. So every time this small gear rotates 49 times, the end biggest gear is going to rotate 15 times. And because that ratio can't be reduced at all, it'll actually be the first time that these gears are lined up just like they are again. And I put in these white quick connects so you can see uh, how the gears are moving around. I'm going to test this by rotating this wheel 49 times and we'll see how it turns out over there. Let's see how this works. Forty six, forty seven, forty eight, forty nine. So now we've got the quick connect on the top over here again, and on this wheel we can see the quick connect is also on the top. So it worked out forty nine rotations here, fifteen rotations on this one, and now again the uh, torque is going to be the opposite. So this wheel, we could put a little bit of torque into it, and we're actually getting more torque on out on this side, but the speed is a lot less. Now if we flip it around. And let's say that we drive this wheel, and this wheel would be, for example, the wheel that is driving on the floor of the robot. We can rotate this wheel, and then what comes out has a lot more speed, but the torque is a lot less. It's a lot easier to stop this wheel now. The power is the same. Whatever power you put into a system is going to come out on the system. And actually, the power might be a little bit less, because you'll lose some from the friction along uh, every axle that is in the system. But the power is going to be about the same whether you drive it one way or if you drive it the opposite direction. Here's a robot whose gears are set up on a 3-4-5 triangle. So the distance between the center of one gear to the center of the other gear is five holes, so it takes up six total holes. And the cool thing about that is that you can change out from the smallest gear to the biggest gear, biggest gear to the smallest gear, or the medium-sized gear to the medium-sized gear pretty quick. You can see how across here we have six total holes, and then going this way we have five total holes, and this way we have four total holes. This is a uh, five, four, three triangle, three, four, five triangle. And in this situation, the motor is, being, uh, is spinning a smallest gear and the wheel is attached to the largest gear, the 56 tooth gear. So we have a seven to three ratio for the speed. So this gear is gonna spin seven times for every time this spins three times. And the uh, torque is gonna be opposite. So if this, motor has um, some amount of torque and we know what the torque is, then this will actually have more torque. We can find that torque by taking the torque put in here, divide it by three, and then multiply it by seven, and that will be the torque coming out on the wheel. So way cool. Design your uh, test robots with six holes total uh, on the gears, and that way you can easily change them out and make it be a big gear to a small gear or a one-to-one -one ratio um, pretty quick and see which ratio works best for your robot. Good luck teams, and remember to use gears to your advantage. Oh, I hope that went well. This radius. Now this comes in handy because if I had a part, I could show you what I was talking about.